Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really cute book style. I'm going to call it the Book of Chocolates rather than the Box of Chocolates. I'm going to call it the Book of Chocolates. I have something similar and I'll link it up here and throughout the video and that is a book again but it's it does really look like a book and I had two chocolate bars in that one. So again if it's something you like just check out that link. But this one here you just pull the belly band off and then it opens up to reveal your chocolates and then you just open the top and out comes the toffee. Now I have done a tutorial using these chocolates before and I actually just done a simple wrap around them so you can check them out but the good thing about these is obviously they're already sealed um, so they're going to stay nice and fresh and then you just pop it back in there close up the top like so it just closes up. You could personalise this, you can do so much with it and it's not just for Christmas, you can use this throughout the year as well. So let me show you how to make this very easy gift. Okay so I've already done one of the boxes here so that's all ready to attach to the next one. So that's the toffee and you just take that off and it's all in the box there or the tray but it's all sealed so it's obviously going to stay nice and fresh and then I am using the Almost Christmas Papers by First Edition. I haven't got a great deal left of this, I've actually used quite a lot which is good. And then your cardstock, so you'll want two pieces of this size which is um, nine and a quarter by eleven. Okay and along the nine and a quarter side you want to score it seven eighths of an inch, seven and seven eighths of an inch and eight and three quarters. Okay, it's an unusual measurement because I've made it specifically for these chocolates and um, that's why I've got the 7 eighths of an inch um, depth to this. And then pop it along the 11 inch side and you want to score at half an inch, 1 and 3 eighths, 5 and 3 quarters and 6 and 5 eighths. Okay. You can just make out all my score lines there. So do that twice. I've got this little piece here, which is for my belly band, which is a piece of three and three eighths by two and three eighths, and it's just so it fit this particular sentiment, which is a simply creative. You've seen me feature these in a lot of my tutorials, and I used them last year as well. I'll share them below. They're little wooden ones, and they're beautiful. And then I'll give you your mats and layers while we're here as well. So this is for the front and back, and and this is four by six and five eighths. I've done it at four because I wanted to be able to get two of these from one sheet of the eight by eight in that pad. And then you'll want two pieces of five eighths of an inch by seven and five eighths and then two pieces of uh, three and seven eighths of an inch by uh, five eighths again. And therefore the sides. And then I'll go through the frame and everything when we get to it. And this is for the belly band. This was actually a piece of scrap and it's one inch by the whole width of the cardstock that I had, which was 12. But if you've got 11 or 11 and three quarters, that would still work as well. And the dies I've used for the aperture, when we add the acetate, are the Card Making Magic rectangle dies. Okay, so first of all, just fold and burnish all of those score lines. Okay, and then along the bottom, so you want the half inch tab on the right hand side, there's one of the sides and then you'll have this extra piece. Make sure that's on the right. And then along the bottom, you're just gonna cut up all of these score lines just to the first score line. This one in the corner, just remove that completely. And then just take a little wedge off of the small little squares here. Okay, and then work now along this side. So this is that tab. You just want to cut down this score line here and remove the top tiny one and that other one there. So just take that whole corner out. And then you can take a little wedge off of each of the corners of the tab because that's what we're going to use to stick it all together. And now you're going to come along to the top here. And you're going to do exactly the same as what you've done on the bottom, but this time you're going to cut past the first score line and go down to the second. This extra tab at the top is so that we can close the box. So, that one there. And that one there. Okay, but what's going to happen is when we close this up, this is going to be on the inside. So with that tab here on the right hand side, this whole section here you're going to remove completely. 
okay like so and then these top sections these top squares you're just going to remove the little rectangle on the very top and that's all you want to do with them we'll cut in a little bit more in a bit but um a lot of you will know that when you make these kind of boxes you want to do this bit right at the end really just to make sure you get a nice closure okay so now if you turn it over this is the inside and this is where we want to draw around our aperture so I've got these stuck together because I cut my frame so when to get a frame you just have whatever the original size is that you've cut your opening get the next size up in the dies and just stick them together like you saw then and then run it through whatever cardstock you're using it will cut your frame but I want this smaller one and this one measures um, just grab my ruler so this one I'm going to be drawing around the outer side so it's three and a quarter by five and five eighths and I'm just going to pop this one in this section here making sure I've got it in the middle okay I think that's about right make sure it's nice and straight and then you just want to draw around that okay so you can see my rectangle shape now I'm going to cut mine with my ruler and my cutting knife however if you don't have a cutting knife you can just make a hole in the middle and just cut down to each corner in fact I'm going to do that I've started so I might as well so just cut down to each corner like so and that one there and that one there and then I'll just go a bit further down on that one and then if you kind of fold as long as you've got them right into the corners if you kind of just fold back each one it just makes it a little bit easier to have kind of a line to follow I know we've got the pencil line there as well but this does help obviously you don't want to rip any of the the corners there so do you make sure you cut down into them nicely but by lifting them up it just makes it a little bit easier to get in and because I've got these very long scissors what I'm actually going to do is fold that one under but it now means I can get right in there and follow along that pencil line and don't worry if you don't remove it all you can always rub it out but you're actually not going to see this because it's going to be inside so I'm just going to work my way around okay so that's all done now if you have cut it by hand I mean I haven't done pretty bad there you can see my corners they're pretty good so what you want to do next is some double sided tape or red tape and you just want to run a strip around your frame and then you just want a piece of acetate that is going to cover where you've just added your tape so just a little bit bigger I'm not going to bother giving you the measurements for this you can see what I'm doing plus everybody's aperture is going to be slightly different you might also have a different shape so just make sure that you have something that's just going to cover and again you don't need to worry too much on how your edges look as long as they're straight because you're not going to see any of this now I've got that piece that's going to go over there so I'm just going to take my backing off and stick that down okay so now I have that lovely aperture then I've got my frame I'm going to stick this down while everything's flat so I've already put some of the tape on the back so I'm just going to stick this over the top okay so now that's all ready and next we can start putting it together so I'm going to flip it over fold this piece over and you just want to add some glue just along that. that's what I remembered you actually want to trim this I'm going to pop in the measurements at the you didn't need the tab to be this big so I remember it came into the might for me it came into the app the acetate window I mean yours might be smaller than mine and then it wouldn't so I've just trimmed that a bit you can see it doesn't come into this view here I think I might have even been able to have got away with that actually but anyway I've just trimmed it off just in case so that's what you can do if that does happen and just make sure it's nice and flat and these are great boxes on their own you can just not stick the bottom now and just make a load of these and stash them away until you need them you might want to just do one of these boxes to give to someone I do already have this on the channel as I mentioned as I just I've just done the wrap around it so they're just like I said they're really nice little gifts and then I'm just going to fold it back oh I've actually got some glue there so just make sure that's dry there we go and then just fold it that way like so and then the bottom is the one without that extra lip on the top so I'm going to fold down the back one first of all and just add my glue 
and then fold in each of the sides. And then fold down the base. And if you turn it up this way, grab your ruler. You can just go in there and spread out all of that glue. Okay, and then I can grab this, pop it in, you'll see it fits perfectly. And now with these pieces, what you want to do is with the top, very slightly shave a bit off, and it's such a small amount, really isn't a lot, because you want this to now lock itself in. Now if you're still struggling with it, what you can then do is take a little bit off just the front. Again, it's the smallest amount. So as soon as you make it too big, you'll find your little closure might pop out. So now, that's now wedged in there. It's not gonna open. You see, you've got a nice closure. Okay, next I can decorate. So just make sure you've got them both the right way up because I've got a directional cardstock there. So I'm just going to flip it over. I'm going to stick this on the back and then I'm going to stick this one on the right-hand side of this one but it's on the left-hand side of that one. So when they come up together, like a book, uh, they meet. The back one I'm not going to bother decorating. You can do, but I'm going to leave it for now. And then that little one you just want to pop on the top. Okay, so that's both of the boxes done. So they're going to go together like this. So you have... Your pattern paper on the top and the side is like facing you and the plane is away so it's going to open up like this. So I've got this piece of cardstock which I believe was one and three quarters. Um, it's just under, it's just over one and five eighths and just under one and three quarters and that's by seven. You just want to score halfway so I could have sworn I'd scored at seven eighths of an inch. Yeah, I think I did. I don't know if this ruler's a little bit out. Anyway, you want to fold and burnish like so. So you've got it like that. And we're going to stick it. I mean, you might not want to fold it. You might want to just keep it flat and then fold it once your glue's completely dry. But you're just going to stick it right over there. So I'm going to run my glue all the way along here. And then I'm just going to sit this quite a lot of glue on there but I do want it to be nice and strong so keep them nice and tight together and basically do not even attempt to prise this book open until this glue is completely dry so I'm going to leave this now for a good 10 minutes just to make sure that's completely set okay whilst that is pretty much dry but I'm going to give it still a few more minutes I'm going to grab my belly band and I'm gonna wrap it. I never score my belly bands, I always just wrap them. And don't worry if it doesn't meet. Like I said, if yours is 11 inches long, you'll still be able to get it up to come over. As long as it can come over onto this top piece, keep it all nice and straight, make sure they line up and just pinch the sides. Don't have it so tight, you wanna be able to slide it. And then you're just gonna stick that over to connect the two sides. So I'm actually gonna use hot glue for this just cause it's a bit quicker. So I'm just gonna pop a piece there. And piece there. And you can just pinch the other kind of sides and then if you take it off and then lie it flat, just grab a bone folder and then you can you know really work those lines. And it's just easier doing it this way rather than working out the score lines for it. Because they're always usually with a belly band, they're those funny measurements because you're wrapping it around something. But now I've got a really nice belly band so that can just go over the top. You want it, like I said, to be snug enough but easy for that person to take off. But now, how nice does that look? So let's now try and open this without the glue. Oh, look what I've done there. <laughs> I thought I did go a bit heavy with the glue and I've got a feeling that that's going to stain. <laughs> I might be okay. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But anyway, it is what it is. There's not much I can do about it now. They're gonna be eaten, I think, pretty quickly. But um, yeah, look, there it is. I think that looks great. Okay, so once again, I'll just bring it up. If you want to decorate this, you can, but I don't know, I don't think it does. And if you are doing this like more of a book, then you could write something down here, or I'll link actually the other book box, unless I didn't already link it up here, um, just to give you another idea on how to, you know, gift some chocolates, but yeah. Apart from that mark in the middle. <laughs> it's going to bug me now, but I'm really not doing it. Once it's closed, I can't see it. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. And, you know, it's something that can be used, not just for Christmas. You know, these chocolates are available all year round. And obviously other chocolates can go in there too. And other gifts. So thanks for watching. And I'll be back again very soon. Bye.